guys, this is Scott vs. Bart, it's Barry and Michael. So today uh, we're going to be talking about the new Nexus 6. Uh, we've already done kind of like a wrap up of all the new Nexus devices that were announced the other day from Google. So check out the link in the video description below to get to that video and see what we think about all the different devices. Um, this video is going to be focusing on the Nexus 6 specifically because there's been some, well, I would say, backlash um, mm. and angerness on the, on the interweb. More than usual though. Um, uh, on the Nexus 6 pricing, um, and first of all, before we get into any of it, what is the prices of the Nexus 6? Um, it's £250, Barry. No, it's not. It's, um, <laughs> it's gone up in price, and that's why everyone's kind of angry about it. So it's going to be coming in 32 and 64 gigabytes. Uh, US pricing is $649 for the 32 gig. And just under seven hundred dollars, so six hundred ninety-nine dollars for the sixty-four gigabytes. So, around five hundred or so pounds in the UK. So, in terms of pricing, of course, if you're a Nexus fan and you've been buying Nexus phones for a while, that's pretty, pretty a large, a large increase uh, from what you were paying before. That's yeah. almost double the amount of a Nexus 5. Yeah. Now of course the Nexus 5 was 16 gig, the base model was now 32, mm -hmm. so you've got to take that into consideration, but flash storage is dead cheap, so that can't yeah, be the cheap, reason. I suppose. <laughs> um, so this is a really big price hike. Um, now we don't have very different opinions. I think I think we have basically the same opinion with just a few a few thoughts. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my my thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, the Nexus 6 is, uh, by all intents and means and purposes, a very high-end device. Um, in terms of the specifications, it's got a super fast quad-core processor, it's got 3 gigs of RAM, a 13 megapixel uh, optical image stabilized camera, a 6-inch quad HD display, and a 3220 milliamp hour battery. Um, so those kind of specs are pretty huge and beefy, um, and it's something you would only see on a top high-end flagship phone like the Note 4, um, for example, it's just come out, which is, I guess, its closest competitor. Yeah. Now, in terms of those specs, if it were any other phone, if it didn't have the Nexus name, those prices would be very average, uh, if not a little bit cheaper um, than something like the Note 4. Um, the problem is, is that Nexuses have been traditionally cheap phones, but that's because Nexuses traditionally haven't been high-end phones. Uh, Nexus, the Nexus 5, for example, admittedly doesn't have a very good camera. Um, it's okay, but it's not great by any stretch. Um, it doesn't have a particularly fast processor, and it's a 1080p screen. The battery is relatively small and not great battery life. Um, so it's not a high-end device. It never have been. Um, so people were saying, we really want a high-end Nexus device. Now they've got one, and the price that comes with those high-end devices have made people shock and scream and stamp their feet um, but I think that's okay it's a high-end device why shouldn't it have a high price yeah I'm I'm not a fan of the price but I can completely see why they've done it obviously you can't put a quad HD display inside a phone you know 30 megapixels optically you know 4k video all this kind of stuff you can't put all that in there without having to increase the prices um, now my opinion I'm of the opinion of Nexus phones have always kind of competed with high-end phones. They've always been the flagship killer before the OnePlus One came around. Um, so, for instance, the Nexus 4, 5, and also now the 6, in my eyes, are competing with, for instance, Samsung. So you've got the Galaxy S, I think it was the 3, compared to the Nexus 4, and kind of going up until now. And you're kind of now going to be comparing the newest flagship from Samsung, the Note 4, with the Nexus 6. And you get a load more features on the Note 4 for at this moment in time not that much more in terms of money on a contract they're going to be pretty much the same price um so i can see why they've done it you know you can't make a cheap phone but you now can't really brag to your friends about having a really good powerful phone running stock android that you've saved a load of money on compared to their new htc1 for instance um so it's definitely a bit of a disappointment but i can understand why they had to go there um and obviously with this whole android silver thing it was kind of not expected, but again, I don't think they could have made it as cheap as previous devices. Yeah, and I think for for me, and the other thing is that Nexus owners are somewhat of a niche group of people. Um, normal people don't buy Nexus phones because you don't know about Nexus phones to start with because 
historically until now, um, they were only sold on the Play Store uh, and you had to go directly to Google to get them and it was a very different buying experience. You could only really buy them outright. Not many places did them on contract, especially in America. Um, so a very small subset of people, I'm going to say like geeks and, uh, and tech people, traditionally of course there were exceptions they were the people that bought nexuses because they knew they were stock android really quick to update and the best google experience um and, and of course they were cheap um now i think google has done a, a complete 180 on this and they've followed the crowd essentially they've made a really high-end device with a high price um and they're they're starting to appeal to the broader consumer base um because in america the biggest change is they're going to be starting to show up in carrier stores and they're going to have carrier backing so you can get them yeah. on contracts you can get them subsidized and because of that the buying it outright model is going away because unlike in England where we are um, buying a phone outright off contract is really really unusual in America it's all about contracts and subsidies um, for better or worse um, so I think that's what they've done with this Nexus 6 they've turned it around and they're like yeah we're gonna we're gonna get into carrier stores we're gonna get on the subsidized model um, but if you want to buy it outright you're gonna have to pay full price for this high spec phone which yeah I, I think they're trying to make a, a flagship phone whereas before the the Nexus phones have kind of been the underdog but they're still really good with specs and things like you say you want one if you're into technology and you want stock Android and things um, obviously they're going to have to advertise this new phone because it's going to be in, in stores in terms of like AT&T in America and things like this. So maybe they've had an increase in price for extra advertisement and things. So the old Nexus phones in the UK anyway, we didn't have adverts on TV or on the radio or anything like that saying this is a phone by Google. You knew about it because you were into technology or you knew kind of what Google were doing. Um, so again, whether that's why they've had to increase the prices, uh, it's going to be a shame to see kind of AT&T or Verizon branding stamped on the back of a Nexus 6. Because again, Nexus phones, you've never had that before. Even if in the UK, we don't have carrier branding anyway in the UK as much, if at all really. Um, but obviously in America, it's stamped everywhere on the phone. And obviously a Nexus device is going to be pure Android, pure Google. And it's kind of going to have a load of corporate stuff put all over it from all these other companies and uh, you know phone carriers and things. So it's, it's a bit of a disappointment. Um, but it may put it into more people's hands, I suppose, which could be a good thing in terms of development-wise and things. If they can hold it because it's so big. If they can hold it because it's so big, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, like I say, I can see why they've done it, but it's definitely a disappointment. I was hoping to, you know, maybe, you know, get one in the future, for instance, but because of the price, I'm going to have to either wait until my contract is upgraded or save up for a while. Um, so, yeah, it's not as impulse buy as what, in, you know, normally was before. I think you bought your... Nexus 5 because your 4 broke and you were in a position where you could just be like, okay, I'm going to get the 5. Yeah. Whereas now if your 5 breaks, you can't just go out and buy this because it's you know, 500 Yeah, pounds. I think that the thing with Nexus is, um, is that you, you were kind of, you were that person that upgraded your phone every year. So, for example, myself, I started that trend uh, when I first got into Android. I got a Galaxy S2, which was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. Um, I sold that after just one year in my two-year contract. And I bought a second-hand Galaxy Nexus. Um, one year after that, I sold that. I bought a Nexus 4. One year after that, I sold that. I bought a Nexus 5. So it's you, you're very much into that recycling system. And you, you could sell your existing device for still a lot of money and put a tiny bit more towards the new device because they were still very cheap. Now with this, I couldn't sell my Nexus 5 and just put less than £100 towards getting a Nexus 6 because it's... You know, I would probably only get one hundred and fifty pounds for my Nexus Five. Yeah, so uh, you're looking at you four hundred, nearly five hundred pounds that you need to it, find. Exactly. To, so to it's, it's a lot of money. Um, so yeah, I guess to to wrap up, um, uh, I could I could summarize this entire situation with with one sentence, and that is, you get what you pay for. So yeah. this is this is a different type of Nexus that we've seen before. It's a high end super super duper spec phone. It is a um, flagship phone now. It is. You can call it a flagship. It, it, it can stand up against the Note 4. The Note 4. Um, but what comes with that, unfortunately, is the price tag. And if you want it, you're going to have to pay for it. Um, I personally, I think we're both kind of against this. We might have liked to see a slightly lower end phone, cheaper. Um, Nexus 5. Nexus 5. I'm um, guessing that's why they've still kept it around. Exactly, um, you can still buy the If you Nexus want a 5. smaller phone, you get the Nexus 5. If you want a cheaper phone, 
you get the Nexus 5. It still runs Lollipop. It's still a really good phone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like Barry said, you get what you pay for. If you want a high-end device, you have to you have to pay for that. So yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, so let us know what you guys uh, think uh, on the internet, um, good or bad. Um, let us know. Um, and start a conversation if you want to message us, uh, please do. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the uh, click button below. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this is Barry from Copper vs. Glass. And Michael from Copper vs. Glass. And like Barry said, subscribe for more videos. We've got a load more coming up in terms of iPads and Apple events. Obviously, previous for the Google event that we talked about. Uh, we'll leave some links down in the description for these other videos that we mentioned for you guys as well. So yeah, thanks very much.